Welcome back, friends. In today's video, we learn that Davis doesn't know how to use his dominoes. We finally start assembling our consoles that we've been working on, and we start building drawer boxes and working with hinges, and we learn that you should never sleep on your jigsaw because you never know when it's gonna come in and save the day. We're Jenny and Davis. We fly through hurricanes for research and build furniture for fun. A while ago, we came up with a business plan to sell quality furniture, which brings people together. Follow along as we build our business empire. Empire? Yes, Jenny, big goals. Okay, we're starting an empire. Maybe one day it'll span beyond the garage. All right, new day, new Bucky shirt. Um, today, I have to get these cabinets like assembled. They have to resemble full cabinets. Yesterday, I took some time and I tried to learn the ins and outs of the domino. I've been using it for a little while, but I haven't used any of the jigs or anything like that. So I was just trying to figure out what everything did. So here's that footage. All right, I have a confession to make. I don't know how my festival domino works. I mean, I can use it. I've, I've used it before. I just, I don't know all of the cool, fancy things that it can do. And I know that we would use it way more often if I knew how to do it, but we've been so busy with cutting boards and charcuterie boards and custom builds that I haven't had time to sit down, study it, and use it. And I've had it for over a year now, and every time I open the box, I end up just taking those jigs and throwing them to the side and just using the tool in its natural state. So today, I'm gonna go out to the shop. I got a couple hours to kill before Jenny comes back. And I'm just gonna play around with it and share with you all of the wonderful things that I learned about the Festool Domino. All right, so how this thing normally works, if you don't have one of these or maybe you just are interested in buying one. So basically, this is a router. So this whole thing spins and you can change out the size of this bit to match the thickness of the little domino that you wanna use. So here's the smallest domino I can use and here's the biggest domino that I can use. So you turn it on, you push it in, and the little bit comes out right here in the middle. Can you see that? You can adjust this fence. You can also flatten it out and plunge straight down. And that's how I was planning on working on these consoles, but I wanna see if any of these jigs helps me with that. Uh, the first accessory. This guy, he slips on the toe of this little reference gauge here. And what this allows you to do is to reference the left and right sides off of these plastic pieces. You can put a tenon straight in the middle of this guy just by, you clamp it in there, you do your little thing and you get a tenon. But this just allows you to reference the left and right sides to keep this secure. The next guy, this guy's a little more useful uh, for us, I guess. So there's these little dovetail slots in the base plate. You put him in here. And then this little pin can index the last hole that you made. Pretend this is a long piece of plywood. You can stick this pin off the edge and measure in a certain distance. Or you can put this pin in the hole of the last one you did if you're doing a whole bunch at common intervals and you just go down that way. And then the last accessory, which I was really excited about, this is supposed to go in the back plate here. And then now this guy's got a bigger foot that you can do th like vertical stuff, which is what I'm about to do with these panels on these cabinets. And then these two little feet kick out and they're supposed to ride in the Festool uh, track you know, for like a track saw. I thought I could use the slot on my Makita saw, but it's just not big enough. But at least I know what all the things in the box do now. So um, if I've missed anything, if I misunderstand how something works, please let me know. Um, yeah, I'd love to be educated on that. That's the end of this story arc. Let's watch something more interesting.
new day, new Bucky shirt. So last night the camera died while we were clamping this guy up. Uh, but he's dry, ready to go now. I gotta put some epoxy on the top of it. And then today I've got to fit all the hardware. I've written a list. Let me show you the list. So these are all the things that I have to do left on these console tables. Uh, the things with the green dot are things I have to do today. Uh, it is currently Tuesday morning and we have to deliver Friday morning. And to give me a buffer day, a day to finish, that means I have to do everything today. So. Today is going to be a busy day because I think some of the drawers don't quite fit the gaps. Should have taken a real world measurement, but I was just trying to be efficient. So I may have to tweak some of those and redo some edge banding and then all the hardware, of course. I've never done European uh, door hinges, so that'll be fun. I got the little Craig jig. Maybe that'll help me out, but yeah, should be a fun day. So we got yet another problem uh, with these cabinets. This is my problem. I did not look to see if these were the right hinges. So uh, this part mounts up inside and then this, the cabinet door, closes over, over the frame. Our doors are inset inside the frame, not over the top of it. So I have to go get new hinges. There's no way to make these work. I could make wider doors, but I really just don't feel like cutting up the, the last bit of plywood we have when I can fix it with a hinge. If I scratch something or really ding something up and I need to remake something, that's what I want the plywood for. So I think the faster thing, it's not the cheaper thing, but the faster thing is to just go get new hinges and use those. So uh, I might return these or see what I can do. But once again, last minute run to Home Depot. That's every project I try to not make a last minute run to Home Depot. I don't think it's possible, but anyway, how it goes. Two hours later. All right, status update. Um, I am now a professional at hinges all types of hinges. It turns out I bought the wrong hinge. I had to go to Home Depot, had to buy new hinges, you saw that. So I installed those hinges on the record player cabinet where the doors are on the inside of the frame. These are also supposed to be that way, but the door is too thick. With these strips that I have that I've nailed in place, the, the door is too thick. The hinge just doesn't work. There's It keeps bumping into itself. So. Uh, I thought, okay, great, I'll just make the door go on the outside and use the wrong hinges that I bought by mistake. Well, that's what I did over here, and it works. It just looks terrible. I mean, when you compare it, that's how it's supposed to be. Next to the one where it's offset, it throws off this chamfer detail on the underside of the top and on the bottom. All of that considered, I just decided that I needed to remake the entire doors, so that's what we're gonna do now. Plan B, uh, Jenny came up with a great idea. So instead of scrapping the doors and doing different doors, we can still get this look with an overlap door. I just have to push it back a little bit. So take a look. The problem is that this door is too far forward. It's, it's not playing nice with the chamfer here or up here. And then there's a big gap here. But if I can push the whole door backwards, there's nothing wrong with the hinges. The hinges are working. I just need to push the whole assembly backwards. So. I'm gonna do a little bit of surgery on the side here. Cut a strip off right here so that the hinges get pushed back a little bit, which will inset this door back to where it's supposed to be. That I think that's gonna be the least amount of work. And then um, just make some longer drawer fronts. Right, and then make some longer drawer fronts to account for the discrepancy of the narrower doors. So, thanks Jenny. That's why I get paid the big bucks. <laughs> so there's a saying that everybody has their two cents. Apparently that's what your opinion is worth. 
But what if somebody has experience doing what you're doing? Isn't their opinion worth a little bit more than the standard two cents? Does 75 cents sound unreasonable for an informed, experienced opinion? I don't know about you, but 75 cents is way cheaper than learning it the hard way and screwing it up on my own. In the stud stack, we have over 100 business owners willing to share their experience and opinions with you. When you subscribe for $75 a month, you get unlimited access to over 100 business owners' professional opinions. That works out to less than 75 cents for each perspective that you're gaining. Ask as many questions as you want. Post videos, post pictures, ask questions on how to optimize your shop, whatever you may need. We also post extra videos. We do big giveaways and we do virtual hangouts. It's a really great time. Only the people who are serious about learning, sharing, and making money are in the community. It's not for everybody. We know there's free groups out there, but sometimes you get what you pay for. If you're interested, there's a link below the like button in the description. Otherwise, you can just go right to studstack.net to jump in. It worked. It definitely works. It looks a lot better now. Um, there's only one little nasty spot that I got to hit with some wood filler, but other than that, it went off way better than I thought it yeah. would. When we first started, I was like, oh no, we're done. We thought we're it toast. was like catastrophe it's status, over. but like, it worked really well. So anyway, it turned out okay. Never would have thought I was going to use a jigsaw or an oscillating tool on a $6,000 project. <laughs> look at this, look, 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 look. look. I fixed it. I have to make new drawer fronts that are long enough. Uh, it, that's easy, it's just three quarter inch uh, walnut. We got plenty of that over on the lumber rack. And I gotta make a couple spacers so that the door will actually stop against the spacer. Yeah, it's crunch time. Well, I assembled the record player with hardware. We did that. We just didn't sand and fill it yet. Um, we did not sand the TV console, but we did assemble it with hardware and we're gonna get all that done and then spray finish. I, I, I still think we'll be spray and finish tomorrow afternoon, so. Who knew that we would be using a jigsaw on a build like this, but it worked. It worked perfectly. It was exactly what we needed. Had it all gone horribly wrong, we were just gonna remake it anyway. And that's the important thing, that the results are the only thing that matter. A lot of you, new guys, new woodworkers, young kids, you do not need to be perfect to sell your work. You don't even need to do it right the first time. You can still remake it and fix it. Just make sure that you're delivering a good quality product at the end, and who cares how many bumps along the road you had to hit. Because if you wait to have 30 years of experience before you make your first sale, you're gonna be 50 years old before you ever do anything. Also, don't feel like you need to tattle on yourself. If you're delivering the piece to the client, you don't need to tell them how many bumps there were along the way. I know a lot of times we feel guilty and we want to own up to it, but there's nothing to own up to. If the customer gets exactly what they asked for on time, zip it. <laughs> It'd be like if you were at a restaurant and let's say you ordered chicken and the chef in the back ended up burning it, but they realized the mistake, threw that one out, made you a brand new one, and then delivered it to your table with the rest of everybody's food. You wouldn't even know what happened. And would the chef really come out of the kitchen and come to your table and say, I'm sorry, I burnt the first one? No. A lot of you would do that. We hear a lot of stories of, of people admitting to problems when people didn't even know there was a problem. It's okay to mess up. You don't need to be perfect. You just need to fix it. So thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe so you can follow along as we build our woodworking business here in Houston. Ask me how I do it, I just stick to the plan.